Hey, Sub30. Uh, thank you so much for for being with us today. Whether you're watching this live on Thursday or watching it at a, at a later time, I'm so glad that you could take some time to be with us today. Uh, we are just few, we are, well, we are one day away from Holy Friday, or, or most of us call it Good Friday, and just a few days away from uh from Easter, which is so so this weekend for us basically those of us that are part of the christian faith this weekend is the most important weekend for us in the history of our faith faith tr tradition so this is this is a big deal this is a big deal for us so last week we last week we, we basically talked about what it means to be salt and light in the topic refuse to be hidden and i talked about you know one of the parables Jesus mentioned, what it means, uh, talking about what it means to be salt, what it means to be light. Uh, today, as we're only, as I mentioned, as we're only a few days away from observing the most important weekend in what I believe is the most important weekend in the history of the world or of, of humanity, uh, which is the Easter weekend. I, I want, to, I would like to teach an, uh, a passage that is closely related to this to this weekend and what that means to us who are about 2,000 years removed from the original uh, event. So let's just jump into our scripture for today. If you have your phone or your Bible, let's turn to Luke chapter 22 and we'll be, I'll be reading from verses 39 to 46. So Luke chapter 22 verses 39 to 42. As you're as you finding that, I want to encourage you to stay engaged with us in the comments. And if you can, do, do us a favor, share this video, because there are people that that we are not directly connected with. They're, they're, but they, are, they are on your platform, and you can help us empower them to live better life decisions so they can live with fewer regrets. Invite people to join you on a watch party, uh, so on and so forth. So, Luke chapter 22, verses 39 to 46. Then accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went, to, went as usual to the Mount of Olives. There he told them, being his disciples, pray that you will not give in to temptation. He walked away about a stone's throw and he knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup, away, this, take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet, I want your will to be done, not mine. Verse 43. Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. He prayed more fervently, and it was in such agony of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like a great drop, like great drops of blood. At last he stood up again and returned to the disciples only to find them asleep, exhausted, exhausted from grief. Mm. Why are you sleeping, he asked them. Get up, pray so that you will not give into temptation. This, this scripture is so loaded with so many things. So many things we could talk about. But So, so let me jump into a little bit of, of background. This passage is at the end of Jesus' Jesus's ministry and his life. In fact, he will be arrested immediately after this incident. And he will, and he will spend the night in jail and be crucified the next day. One of the things that really stood out to me is why would Jesus, why would he choose his last act as a free person? Why would Jesus choose the discipline of surrender? Why would Jesus choose the discipline of surrender as his final act as a free man? Why would Jesus choose the discipline of surrender as his final act as a free man? And, and, and this question basically had dawned on me for so long and that's why today i want to teach on the topic of surrender surrender as defined by the dictionary is an action of yielding one's person or giving up uh the possession of something especially into the power of another again the question i want to explore today is why would jesus why would jesus choose his last act as a free man to surrender. Now, albeit he surrendered to God's will, but nonetheless, that was his last act as a free man, and he chose to surrender. 
like I said, there is so much to unpack. Before I even get to that question, one of the other things that really jumped out to me is in verse 45. And when Jesus came to his disciple, he said he found because Jesus, more than most people, understands what it means to be exhausted by grief. You're exhausted by the equal, the inequality that 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 plagues our nation. You you are exhausted by 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 the unfairness that you see every day. You are exhausted by what it means to be you. You are exhausted by so many things, and you're grieving, and you're exhausted by grief. And, and Jesus wants to say to you, "I get you, child, because I've been there." And I understand. His disciples were exhausted by grief. Because they know. It was like, even though they didn't quite know, but they could, they could feel that something was about to go down that we are not quite ready for. Something was about to go down. Something was about to go down that will shake our world. Something went down in 2020 by the trials of what happened to them. And what is happening to them and people in their family or in the community. Jesus gets you and he's with you. So back to the topic of surrender. And I think the key the, the key to the word surrender is in the latter part of the word render, which means to give. So there's one thing I know that, it, that is true about me and that is also true about you. You and I, we both have areas in our lives that we are yet to fully surrender to God. It doesn't matter how spiritual you are. It doesn't matter how how much you pray, how much you fast, how you love to worship. There are areas in your life that you are yet to fully surrender to God. Same for you, it's true, also for me. Other people may not even know what this area is or areas are. Sometimes not even your best friend. If you're married, sometimes not even your spouse knows. And sometimes you're ashamed of this. Sometimes, other times you, you struggle with this area that you have not yet fully surrendered to God. Sometimes there's pain and guilt of, of, of this area that you've not fully surrendered to God that eats you up from the inside. And, and most of the times, only you know what this area is. And I think perhaps, just maybe, God is calling you to surrender fully on this Easter weekend. Whatever that area is, maybe God is calling you to surrender that fully. Some of you, that area is your, is your life. And if you're listening right now, and, and, and maybe for you, the first step in this process is to first surrender your life to Christ. And if that is you, I, I want to pause. If, what, what that simply means is that if you have not made the decision to say, I'm choosing to let Jesus be the pilot of my life or the captain of my life or the one to lead my life, then you're the one I'm talking to. Your first step in this process is to pause right now and, and make that decision for Jesus to be the one to fully be in charge and control of your life, to be totally sovereign of your life. So I want to give you the opportunity to do that this moment. Would you just say this prayer after me? Dear Jesus, I render my life to you fully for you to be the Lord, Master and Savior of my life. On this Easter weekend, I choose you as my pilot. I choose you as my captain and I choose you as my ultimate leader. Amen. Well, if you just prayed that prayer for the first time, welcome, congratulations, welcome to the to the God family, I promise you that is the best decision you will ever make. We here at Sub 30, we do one thing and one thing only, and that is to empower you to make better life decisions so you can live with fear regrets. So if you just say that, if you just if you just pray that prayer for the first time, do us a favor. There is a number. Um, 
in the chat. It's a 484 number. Just text the word accepted to that number and we will get in touch with you. I mentioned the one thing we do here at Sub30 is to empower you to make better life decisions so you can live with fear and regrets. And we do that through our small groups that we call Sub5. So once you connect with us again, you'll see a prompt um, in the chat. Uh, we, will, we will connect with you and put you in a sub five because that's the most our sub fives are the most important thing that we do here at sub 30. so back to surrender now what does it mean to fully surrender what does that look like now, it may look different it looks different from person to person or from situation to situation but here's the first key to surrender is not a passive act it's not just throwing up your hand and say, I give up. It's not just throwing up your hand and say, well, I can do this no longer. It is an act of grief. That's why the apart. That's why when Jesus came to the disciples, they were exhausted from grief. Because they knew that as Jesus was surrendering his life to the will of God, they also would be surrendering their lives, some of them literally, to the will of God. So surrendering, like I said, it's, to surrender is not a passive act. It is an act of grief, an act of pain, and an act of agony. And that's what the scripture was talking about when the scripture said that Jesus paid, prayed fervently and he was, such, he was in such agony of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. To surrender brings pain, it brings grief, because you're consciously and continuously going against your human nature to be free in your own terms. We live in the land of the free after all. So anything that goes against infringing your freedom, anything that goes against, anything that goes to attack or will suppress your freedom, our natural tendency is to fight back. But when we surrender, we actually fight. Instead of fighting against that which takes away of our freedom, we fight for that which will take away our freedom. And that kind of goes against our natural human nature, which is to be free in our own terms. To surrender is an act of vulnerability. Because you're giving up control, giving up control to other, to the other, without knowing what that other might do with that which you've given them. You're literally saying, have it your way, God. And that's really, really huge. It's like you're taking your most precious your most valuable asset and giving it to someone knowing and trusting that this person is good but but you don't quite know what this person is going to do with your most precious and most valuable asset and you're saying have it your way I trust that you're good, but I don't know what you might do with, do with this. But, but nonetheless, as Jesus said, not what I want, not my will, but let your will be done. God, when you surrender to God, you're literally saying, God, I don't know what the outcome is. I know this process might include grief and pain and agony. But nonetheless, I choose to consciously and continuously give up control of me over to you. And let you do what you do with that. Whatever that is. And I think that's the part that is so hard for all of us. That whatever that is. It would be easy for me to say, God, I'm giving you up control. I'm giving up control to you so you can do X, Y, Z. Here you go. Go get it done. It would be much easier to say, God, I'm, giving, I'm surrendering to you so you can do X, Y, Z the way I want it to do. But when we surrender, we're basically saying, God, I'm giving up control to you, the end. There is no catch after that. It's just, this is it. Whatever this is, have it your way. Whatever your way turns out to be. Whenever your way turns out to be. 
And that, that sometimes comes with pain and grief. And the other part about surrendering is that it is in so prayer is a medium for trading temptation for surrendering to the Holy Spirit. This is so key that Jesus said it twice to his disciples. to pray that you would not give in to temptation. Because one of the biggest temptations we face as Christians is the temptation to not surrender. Because the enemy knows that if we do not surrender, then he has the power to move us swiftly as he sees fit. So, so sometimes we pray that, God, I put my life in the palm of your hands. That is a prayer of surrender. Because when you are in the palm of God's hands, like God is protecting you with God's, with his life. So therefore, nothing can just come in and out the, and snatch you away from the hand of God. And we do this mostly through the medium of prayer. So prayer is a medium for trading, temptation for surrendering. To the Holy Spirit. So, so it is in prayer that this divine exchange happens. The divine exchange of you falling into temptation. Exchange with you surrendering to the Holy Spirit. The divine exchange of you falling into the temptation to do things or lead things the way you want to. To letting God mold you and shape you. That is why prayer it is perhaps the hardest discipline for most Christians. Worship is easy for most of us. I mean, it's great. But prayer? Prayer is one of the hardest disciplines because that's where one of the most transformative work of the Christian life happens in prayer. That is where the transition from the, the law of falling into temptation to daily surrendering to the Holy Spirit. And here's another key thing, another key point about surrender. We are transformed when we surrender. The act of surrendering results in the act of divine transformation. That's why Romans 12, chapter 1 and 2, Paul says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give or surrender or render your bodies to God because all he has done for you, because of all he has done for you, let them that your body, let them be a living and holy sacrifice. You cannot sacrifice something that you've not surrendered. Mm. The kind he will find acceptable. This is the true, this is truly the way to worship God. Paul is saying that the way to truly worship God is to surrender. So next time you are in church or next time you're at home on your car, worshiping God to some music, Ask yourself this question, is this leading me to an act of total surrender? And verse 2, Romans 12, 2 continues. Don't copy the behavior and custom customs of this world, but let go, but let God, sorry, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. And here's the key. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good. And pleasing and perfect. Paul says it starts with first to give or surrender yourself to God. Because it is, and this leads me to my next point. The more you surrender to God, the more you know the will of God for you. It is difficult to know God's will for you outside of full surrender to God. Because surrendering to God is also surrendering to God's will for you. And how do you do this? I want to quickly share three things with us. How do you engage in this act of surrender? Number one, you choose every day God's will and God's desires over yours. In other words, daily choose God's, God's desires over yours every day make the conscious choice and decision that today god i'm going to choose your desires over mine i'm going to choose what you want over what i want 
I'm going to choose your way over my way. I'm going to choose your spirit over my flesh. And that's a daily conscious and intentional decision that we have to make. Secondly, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is tough. Daily choose God's freedom. Daily choose God's freedom over my freedom. So you again, just like choosing God's desires over your desires. And you know what your desires are. Because Holy Spirit will check you whenever you desire something that is outside of God's will. And, and what you do whenever Holy Spirit checks you is to go with that checking. And the same thing too. Here's the point. When you daily choose God's freedom over yours. Whenever you want to engage in your freedom that's, that, that is contrary to God's freedom. Holy Spirit in you will check you. And what you need to do is pause and follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. So you got to choose every single day that today, God, I'm going to choose freedom in you over freedom for me. And like I said, this, this is so contradicting to our human nature, which wants to be free and to be free in our own terms. But God is calling us instead to be free and live free in him. So you have to choose daily. God, I'm going to choose to live free. To, I'm, going to, I'm going to choose your freedom over my freedom. And we know all of this. And the third point is by staying connected with God's word. Because you know, the more you read God's word, the more you know what God's freedom is, the more you know what God's, God's desires are for you. And that's why for us at Spring Valley, last year, we call it last year the year of the Bible. We went through the Bible as a church. This year, we're going through the New Testament and we're calling this year the year of the Bible and prayer. Because like I said, prayer is one of the most transformative spiritual disciplines. So we're going through the New Testament and the more you stay engaged in God's word, the more you stay connected with God's word, the easier it becomes for you to surrender to God and to God's will for you. And Paul says that God's will for you is good, is pleasing, and it's perfect. God has the perfect will for you. But you only find that when you're fully surrendered to God. So today, this is what I want to leave you with. How surrendered are you? Really? How surrendered to God are you? Really? When you meet in your sub five or when you think about this, that's part of what I want you to think about. And start engaging God in his word and in prayer so you can live a life of daily surrender. God bless you. I love you. And I can't and I hope you have the best Easter yet. And may God bless you and your household. Amen.